So the rationale of uh, investigating what is the relationship between the dose of uh, steroids and the time to initiate a biologic was the following. You know, steroids may make people feel better with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, pain goes away, inflammation decreases, and this may reassure the physician that the patient is doing well. So as a result, if a patient is on steroids, the disease activity is better controlled, and this may delay the time to initiate a biologic. So I want to see what is the relationship are higher steroid doses de uh, delaying the initiation of a biologic, or the higher steroid doses make the patient and the physician to get on a biologic earlier? So PQRS mandates that um, if a patient is on more than 10 milligrams of prednisone, um, then a documentation of a plan should exist in the patient's chart, right? So this may be a prompt for the physician to remember that the patient is on a moderate or high dose of steroids and do something about that. But as I said, on the other hand, patients on steroids are doing better, and this may delay the initiation of another medication, such as a biologic agent. The PQRS mandates that if a patient is on more, on 10 milligrams of prednisone or more, then a plan about the management of steroids should be documented in the patient's chart. So physicians, rheumatologists now have to be compliant about that. Every patient with 10 milligrams of prednisone or more should, uh, should have a plan about decreasing the prednisone or doing something about the disease activity that necessitates uh, such a, a moderate dose of steroids. So for this study, we used uh, the Corona Registry. As you may know, the Corona Registry stands for Consortium of uh, Rheumatology Researchers of North America. We have been following patients since 2001. Uh, over this more than 10 years of follow-up in the registry. More than 40,000 patients have been enrolled and are being followed. Uh, more than 600 rheumatologists participate across the United States in more than 100 uh, rheumatology practices. So as you can realize, with more than 40,000 patients enrolled in the registry, we can identify the patient phenotypes we're interested in. So for this particular study, we wanted to focus on patients who are uh, who have early rheumatoid arthritis, who are biologic naive, and who have tried at least uh, one conventional synthetic DMARD. And then we took this patient cohort and we followed up for 24 months. We tried to identify patients on higher or moderate or lower dose of steroids. And we wanted to see whether the time to initiation of a biologic differs. So the population for the study, uh, following the exclusion inclusion criteria, was around uh, 2,000 patients. The majority of them, as it happens in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, more than 60% were females. Average age, if I remember well, was around 40, 50 years old. And the duration of uh, rheumatoid arthritis was less than one year because this was one of the inclusion criteria we used. 60% uh, approximately of the patients were seropositive for CCP or rheumatoid uh, factor. And all of them had to have used at least one conventional synthetic DMARD uh, before they were included in the study. So we had patients with, uh, uh, with moderate and high disease activity, and some of them were also uh, on low disease activity. We shouldn't forget that these patients were already, uh, some of these patients were already on steroids, so the fact that they were on low or uh, disease activity or emission could be due to the fact that they were using prednisone. The clinical disease activity index is a metric, is a tool, to uh, evaluate how active rheumatoid arthritis is for every single patient. So in order to calculate that, we count the number of joints that are swollen. You know, rheumatoid arthritis causes swollen joints and painful joints, plus the number of joints that are tender, plus we're using a visual analog scale to uh, calculate how active the disease is in the physician's impression, in the physician's mind, and the same for the patient, how active the disease is in the patient's opinion. So we add all, all of those together, and there are cutoffs, right? For the CDI, the Clinical Disease Activity Index, you know, more than 10 means moderate disease activity. Less than 10 means low disease activity. Less than 2.6 means remission, for example. So uh, it's getting more and more frequent and a habit for rheumatologists in the United States and elsewhere as well, to use these tools uh, every time we evaluate a patient. 
Uh, you may be familiar with the treat to target guidelines that entail that every patient should be evaluated very frequently until uh, disease activity has reached uh, the low level of disease activity or remission, right? So as long as the patient doesn't reach that, we should do something. The, uh, in the center of this theory is that the fact that we have to use a tool, right, to evaluate disease activity. And one of the, of the tools that can be used is the clinical disease activity index. What is good about the clinical disease activity index, the CDI, is that you don't need an inflammatory market to calculate it, right? It's just the physician and the patient. So you don't have to wait for the laboratory to send you back the results of a SED rate or, or of a CRP. Okay, so you can calculate at the time of the visit and you can uh, make decisions about uh, further therapy. There is literature showing that uh, CDI, uh, RAPID-3, DAS-28, or any, any metric that the rheumatologist can use is equivalent in helping the rheumatologist and the physician and, and the patient to reach their common goal, which is put the disease under control. We enrolled 2,000 patients. Approximately 800 of them had to be on steroids. We, uh, some of them were on a low dose of steroids, less than 4 milligrams. Some of them were on a higher dose of steroids, more than 10 milligrams, up to 20, 30, 40 or more. And we followed these patients for 24 months. So the majority of patients who needed a higher dose of steroids started the biologic agent earlier. The majority of the patients who needed a lower dose of steroids started the biologic uh, agent later. In other words, patients who need a higher dose of steroids uh, start the biologic agent earlier. What this means? That the rheumatologists are doing what they're supposed to do. So they don't forget the patient on steroids for long periods of time. Steroids are great medications. They can help us uh, put the disease under control. They can help us bridge the therapy, uh, you know, we can use steroids for a couple of months until methotrexate or until biologic agents start work. Biologic agents and methotrexate and the other conventional DMARDs do not start work, do not start working immediately. So we need something in the, in the, in the meanwhile. Uh, in summary, patients, the physicians did what they were expected to do overall. So the, uh, yes, they stayed on steroids without starting a biologic. For example, in the patients who were, in the patient cohort who were taking a higher dose of steroids, 60% of them start the biologic agent in the 24 months we followed the patient. So another 40% did not start the biologic. Uh, similar results we had for patients on lower dose of steroids. So yes, there is a fraction of patients that uh, could have been managed uh, in a better way. That's true. Overall, though, 60% or more start the biologic relatively early. So we could have investigated whether patients who didn't start the biologic had any contraindication to start the biologic. So this was, this was, not, part of the, this was not part of the study, but that's, that's a good question. Perhaps these patients who didn't start the biologic had a contraindication. Perhaps they had a serious infection. Perhaps they had a, a recent malignancy that could have contraindicated. Perhaps they were planning uh, there were females planning a pregnancy, perhaps they were pregnant females and rheumatoid arthritis is doing better during pregnancy. All this could be possible explanations, but we didn't investigate that as part of this study, yes. The strength of the study was that we were able to identify the phenotype of patients we were interested in. So we wanted to find a lot of patients who were naive to biologics, who had early rheumatoid arthritis, less than one year since diagnosis, who had used one or more conventional synthetic DMARDs, and we were able to identify more than 2,000 patients among the pool of 40,000 patients that have been enrolled uh, in corona. And we wanted these patients to uh, have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis after 2008. Corona has been around since 2001. So among 40,000 patients, more than 40,000 patients, we were able to identify 2,000 patients with a specific phenotype we were interested in. And we wanted this patient to have at least two years of follow-up in corona. So that was the strength. A large pool of patients enabled us to identify the patients we were interested in. 
okay, without relaxing the criteria we wanted uh, in the beginning of the study. What does this mean? So in a sense, this means that if you have such a large pool of patients, um, it's easier to identify patient cohorts you are interested in, patient cohorts that are more relevant to what happens in real life. Okay? So the limitation of the study was that we didn't look, for example, what was the uh, reason some patients uh, did not start a biologic. We didn't look for contraindications. What was the reason some patients delayed the initiation of the biologic? That's the next step in this, in this study. That's one of the next steps in this study. The overall implication of this study is that patients still need steroids. The uh, disease-modifying medications that we're using, the conventional synthetic, the biologic, the targeted synthetic demands, take a while before they start working. And you can never know if the patient is going to respond to one of those medications. So we do need steroids to manage the patients at the beginning of the disease. There are also studies that show that people who take steroids uh, after diagnosis and until the disease-modifying agents start working, they do better in the long term. They have fewer erosions in their joints. But steroids, on the, on the other hand, are associated with, uh, with adverse events. They increase the blood sugar levels. Uh, they may cause osteoporosis. They suppress the immune system, perhaps a little more compared to uh, the disease-modifying agents. Uh, so we should have in mind that uh, if we can have the patient on a as low dose of steroids as possible, or even zero milligrams of steroids, then we shouldn't forget to deal about that. There should be a plan about decreasing the steroids or even taking the patient off steroids. I think the recent guidelines say that up to 10 milligrams of prednisone for up to three months, it's an acceptable uh, solution for patients who need such dose of steroids. I would agree with that, but uh, I think it would be ideal if uh, the fewer possible number of patients stayed on the lower possible dose of steroids for the shorter period of time. So CORONA stands for Consortium of Rheumatology Researchers of North America. It has been around since 2001. It enrolls patients. It started uh, with enrollment of patients with rheumatoid arthritis across the United States more than 40 sites, uh, approximately 150 rheumatology practices, academic and private, uh, more than 650 participating rheumatologists. So what happens in corona is that we use questionnaires for the physician and questionnaires for the patient. And every time the patient comes in for a regular, for a routine clinical encounter, the physician and the patient fill out these questionnaires. The thing that these questions are five or six or seven pages long, so I would say that we have a very good description of the disease at very specific time points uh, for these patients. The average, the median time of follow-up for these patients is approximately five years. In other words, approximately all of our patients have been followed for five years. That's, that's the average number. That's the median number of follow-up. Um, this has enabled us to publish a lot of uh, articles in uh, high-tier uh, medical journals and uh, be present in every uh, uh, international meeting, the EULAR in uh, Europe and the ACR here in the United States. Uh, we, I think we have generated breakthrough knowledge about the disease, about its phenotype, about the adverse events associated with medications, about the comorbidities associated with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, about what's the best way to manage uh, these patients. Uh, academic rheumatologists, uh, world authorities in rheumatoid arthritis, participate in the board of corona and uh, participate in our publications as well. We have a large team of epidemiologists, biostatisticians, and support group. Uh, I think the secret of success for corona is the relationship we have with uh, every rheumatology practice uh, in the United States. Over the years, we have expanded to other diseases. Uh, spondyloarthropathies, psoriasis, we had the registry about gout, we're preparing registries in other autoimmune diseases as well.